He is the most trusted and honest and also independent voice in New Zealand sport, and he joins us again, Jamie Wall. Jamie, welcome back. Thank you, Martin. It's great to be talking with you. I love the article that you have written for RNZ. I presume it's still Radio New Zealand. I know that they're going to combine and that they were Radio New Zealand National, but their website, it's still RNZ, isn't it? Uh, yeah, rnz.co.nz. Okay, it's titled <laughs> The Die is Cast New Zealand Rugby Board Made to Look Weak as Players Back Foster. So I want to get onto this because it's a brilliantly written piece, people, and I recommend that you are, that you grab hold of it and have a good chew through it. First and foremost, were you surprised by what the decision that came out yesterday? Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, I, I, I thought he was, uh, I thought he was gone. Um, everything I'd heard, uh, both externally and from what I could gather from Mark Robinson's Zoom call on Sunday evening, pointed to him uh, stepping down, so Foster stepping down, um, and being replaced. Uh, so yeah, it did come as a surprise, uh, and I, I don't think I'm alone uh, in that either. Okay, so the, you know, you get the whispers like we like you know, we all get the whispers as well. When did you think the tide turned? And, and I, look, that's not a, a, a silly question to ask because surely it couldn't have turned just because of that result in Joburg, Jamie. I honestly think it did. I think that I think it turned when Bowden Barrett was in the sin bin and the All Blacks dug deep and played like an actual All Black team for the first time in ages and ground out what was a you know very memorable victory and it gave ample evidence that things had changed within the coaching staff uh and obviously with the personnel changes that they made uh that the team seemed to have a new lease of life um and that you know, whatever happens now, at least they're kind of pointing in the right direction after kind of treading water for a while. It's a, it seemed or drowning. I'd, I'd mm. say. Um, but I, I, I think that there was an ultimatum laid down that if you lose that game, you're done. And then there was a loaded gun put on the put on the table for him. Um, and it was just more the kind of nature of the victory that 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 did it. You know, it's uh, it was the fact that you know that like we talked about the other day that it was the first ever upset the All Blacks have ever caused. Yeah. And so because of that really unique nature of it, uh, it, it probably freaked NZ Rugby out because now they have to, to make what originally was quite an easy call um, now quite a tough one because they were going to get a lot of blowback about going oh why would you sack a coach who just pulled off one of the most memorable victories of all time. Um, and the board, uh, obviously the very archaic way of doing things, uh, where the board has to decide on it, um, has, that was enough for them. And it's, it's a, it find ourselves in a really strange, strange situation because all of a sudden two wins out of seven tests mm. is good enough. Yeah, look, the word that springs to mind straight away is fickle and run with the hares and hunt with the hounds. Look, this is a $270 million company here. Uh, and, and, mm. and what all of you people who are all corporate types, we know that of the board, you, you, know, you all run multi-billion dollar companies or trillion dollar companies yourselves. You've all got all this business acumen. None of you would run your own businesses like this. That's what really frustrates me. I know they wouldn't. But really because they perceive that public opinion might turn against them if they sack the coach, that is fickle, Jamie. That's not the way you deal with it. That's not the way you run things. It's, it's very strange, but if you if you re- start to have a good think about the way NZ Rugby or the NZ Rugby Football Union or whatever you want to call them over the years have, have generally operated, it suddenly becomes a little less surprising because they're always going to err on the side of caution. And it's just weird that erring on the side of caution over the last couple of years has meant that the All Blacks have gotten worse rather than than staying the same. And, and, and you know, they... It's just this deep-rooted feeling of conservatism within the the organisation that means that if something can slightly convince them to not change something, then they'll do it, you know, and they'll just stay the course. and And it's it's frustrating because you've got a situation now where you've you've got two 
you know, coaches or I, I want to say compelling cases for coaches, but I don't think, you know, that's probably the right word to, to sum it up. But there was, you've got Scott Robertson kind of sitting there and whatever happens to him now, it's going to be one of these great what if stories going on. And it's because they couldn't make a hard, a hard call. Um, I'm not, I'm not, now I don't know what Scott Robertson's situation is. For all we know, he could have said no and said, I want to wait until, you know, the start of the next World Cup cycle. I think that would be completely understandable from his point of view because of course, he has yeah. all the leverage <clears throat> in the situation. But, you know, the mail I was hearing was that Foster was simply going to go and then Joe Schmidt was going to come in as a, some sort of caretaker kind of role with obviously Jason Ryan um, continuing in a role that he's clearly had quite an effect on. Oh, yeah. oh, so yeah. the, the, lo- the logic there was, was sound because um, you could have the situation where NZ Rugby didn't actually really have to admit they were wrong because they had Schmidt waiting there and they could, they could claim that they'd thought this whole thing through and they had a backup plan. And for that not to be enacted, like that, that part is the strange one for me. Jamie Wall is with us. He writes for the spin-off for Radio New Zealand in no particular order at all and works for OFC. And we're talking about this decision by the board yesterday. Honestly, watching Stuart Mitchell, the chairman, read that pre-prepared statement, which people he didn't write for himself, one of the millions of fluffers wrote it for him, he looked as though he was reading a 50-page report on climate change, didn't he? There was just nothing at all, and, and enthusiasm in his face or joy in his face. This was a guy that we were all told wanted Foster gone. Then he sits there and he says, oh, no, they've got the full backing of the board and the full confidence of the board. We back Robbo, we back Fozzie. I mean, this is, I'm going to hark back now to you, the point of your article. They're made to look weak. And, and I, totally, I totally agree with you. Jamie, none of, you know, none of the pickle that they are in is anything other than what they have done to themselves by themselves. Yeah, absolutely. This is a complete self-inflicted nut punch. And another one, again, on top of a couple of years' worth of them, you know, and I made the point in the article that um, obviously player power has played quite a bit in the retention of Foster. Now, I'm not 100% sure what to make of this, um, given that, you know, as someone who's played team sports, obviously you, you like to have a say in, in what goes on um, and, you know, who's telling you, what to do, and there has to be kind of a, a level of respect that goes both ways. And the player, the, the undeniable fact um, is that the players do like Foster and they do respect him, um, and they have his. They they obviously have the he he obviously has the senior players' support. Um, now, the fact that they all felt so compelled to come out and say that, uh, which you know is as All Blacks is very rare because, you know, they generally, and you know this as well as I do, that they generally never say anything particularly interesting at all. No. So for them to feel like compelled to be able to say this is a direct result, I think, of what of those those incidents that have happened over the last couple of years, and it goes back to the Silver Lake thing, where this deep division has been drawn between the governing body and the players themselves. And I think this, more than anything, is the most difficult situation that uh, NZ Rugby could, could find themselves in because now they have a unit of their business, which they rely on quite heavily, who is emboldened to question them, uh, question their bosses, um, to and with, with complete impunity uh, because they can't sack the All Blacks because they've just retained, or they can't really sort of make any calls to move any, any players or anything. Because I've just retained the one coach that has their has their full backing. Uh, perhaps there's something to be read read into that uh, about the way the players feel about their own situation and the role that Foster can play, and uh, and in, in, in them, you know, continuing on, um, and also the team management itself. And we kind of talked about this the other day, so I don't want to repeat myself. But I think there is a high level of job protection going on within that business unit. That I think that um, that I think that NZ Rugby probably want to do something about, but now have tied their hands uh, over it. So there's there's a lot going on within that relationship itself, and when it really comes down to the core of the issue, it's not really about the coaching setup. It's not really about the way the team's playing. It's about that division 
and it's about how that can be healed and strengthened and made into something uh, you know that unifies this governing body and its its staff rather than something that's holding it back and there there I think if we can start to look at that if we can start to talk about that and we can start to figure out how to how to fix that then we're only, then and only then are we truly going to move forward I wanted uh, one quote from your article, and I'm not going to spoil it for people because I want you to read this, people. It's on the rnz.co.nz site. Uh, Jamie Wall has written it. Um, it is about the New Zealand rugby board. He said, made to look weak. Unbelievably gormless temerity. I mean, that is an orchestrated litany of lies quote. That's just gorgeous, mate. Unbelievably gormless temerity. It's, it could be a band. It could be a song title, mate. I, I All of a sudden, I'm back in the early 80s, and I'm punked up, mate, and I'm <coughs> pogoing to that. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, well, I've often liked to say this after a few beers at the rugby club that the people who, uh, a lot of the people who are making the decisions around our national game are, gormless, tactless, artless, passionless, sexless people. And I stick by that. I couldn't put all of those in that in no. article, so I just stuck gormless. <laughs> all right, quickly then, before we get on to the OFC stuff, because I want to ask you about that Champions League final yesterday. Um, is it a good idea then? Uh, are you backing this coach personally in this job? And are we are we going to revisit these stupid arguments? And they're not, okay, I won't say they're stupid. Are we going to revisit these arguments about the coach from now till the World Cup, or is it over? Well, I don't. I don't think they're stupid arguments, but I think it's. <clears throat> I think it's stupid to be having them over and over again because this isn't the first time we've done this. It's not even the second time. Yeah, I think that's what um, I mean. Yeah. And another another loss. Uh, another loss in the next run of tests. We're going to be doing it all over again. I mean, the, there's a good Pumas team coming over here, and they've already beaten the All Blacks, and now they want to beat us at home. They've just seen Ireland do it. They're going to be full of confidence. There's a Blair's Low Cup coming up okay the Aussies aren't playing great at the moment um, but again neither are the All Blacks uh, apart from that that one win on the weekend so I'm going to need to see a considered body of work before I can sort of back uh, this current coaching team I think like I said I think they're heading in the right direction um, I, I want them to win I think you know like like everyone else in New Zealand I want the All Blacks to win but we have a right to question the way in which they're going about doing it. Jamie Wall is with us, the most independent, trusted voice in New Zealand sports journalism. I say that because I believe it. Finally, then, the OFC Champions League final. And this is one of the many hats you wear. I've done this yeah. myself, mate, ground announcing at these things, uh, which is a real hoot. Um, to be played on a Wednesday, kind of bizarre day to, to have a fixture of that important. You got away with it weather-wise. Auckland City got up 3-0. And that's no great surprise to anyone who knows anything about football in this region because that club just has that history, doesn't it? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, it was the tenth uh, Oceania Champions League win. Wow. Um, they really, they really dominated um, the tournament from from start to finish. Uh, there were there were a few uh, really good games, but it, it became pretty evident early on that they were they were a step ahead. Uh, it obviously helped that they were playing at home. Um, it's been a while since a lot of those Pacific Island teams have had to come down to New Zealand. And we had a couple of nice days at the start, but the weather kind of packed in. Uh, it was cold. It was, uh, you know, a bit windy. Um, but, yeah, we, I mean, uh, we're really happy with the way the tournament went. Um, got the result, uh, you know, got some really good games in. Um, and it was pretty well well attended final. We actually had a bit, really big crowd on Sunday uh, when Auckland City played their semi-final against Central Coast. Uh, FC from the Solomon Islands had a really good turnout from the local Solomon Islands community. It was awesome to have them there, uh, and yeah, ha- had a had a great final. Uh, Cam Housen, uh, all right, um, opened the scoring with a penalty, and then Gerard Garriga uh, banged in a couple uh, to make it three nil. Um, so now the Auckland City means that they get to go to the FIFA Club World Cup uh, as soon as they confirm when and where that is happening.